Want to be more comfortable in your home? Then we need to talk about insulation. Today, we're at the Bay Street Passive House, where we're going over how insulation is going to ensure comfort, efficiency, and a quiet home. So let's take it away. In order to understand how a house performs, we have to understand how that house was built. Now this house was built in 1937, and they really didn't insulate houses because energy was cheap, and it was cheap to heat and cool a house. Now this house didn't have any insulation anywhere. Didn't have any insulation in the roof, or in the floors, or in the walls. And that made for a house that was extremely hot in the summertime, and extremely cold in the wintertime. In fact, in this vaulted portion of the ceiling above me, there was no insulation and we could see the backside of the shingles. And I've been in here with an infrared camera before and taken a picture of the ceiling at 135 degrees. Walking into this room was like walking into an easy bake oven. So really when we're trying to make a passive house, we need to make sure that that house is super insulated and comfortable all year round. So in order to dress the above insulation in this vaulted ceiling, which are typically very hard to insulate, because we need to worry about venting that roof or allowing moist water vapor to get out of the roof so it doesn't condense on the underside of the sheathing and cause mold and mildew damage in the wintertime. So what we did was we took rigid insulation. So we took two layers of two and a half inch polyisocyanurate insulation and put it up against this roof rafters between uh, the rafters and underneath the sheathing. What that did, those two layers of insulation added an R30 of insulation to the underside of this roof, dramatically changing how this area performed. Now behind me in the attic you see, we have a big vaulted space. Now most houses have insulation on the floor of the attic, which places the insulation at the ceiling level. And then above the attic, they're venting it. So they allow air to come in and out of that attic. What that does is it basically wind washes or allows wind to permeate through that insulation, dramatically decreasing its functionality. In passive house projects like this, we actually make a sealed attic. So there's no air going in and out of that attic. And we fill that attic with insulation. So in this attic, we're gonna add an extra 12 inches of loose pack cellulose insulation. That's gonna add an additional R36 of insulation, making that attic very, very comfortable. In addition, we're gonna actually go upstairs and look what we did on top of the roof. Over the entire house, we have an additional two layers of two and a half inches of thick polyisocyanurate insulation. That adds an additional R30 of insulation over the entire house which means in the vaulted portion of the house, we have the R30 below the roof and an additional R30 on top of the roof, giving us a roof of an R60. In the portions of the house with the attics where we've put in the cellulose insulation, we had an R36 there, plus the additional two layers of polyiso on the top of that roof, which gives us an R66 of insulation in those portions of the house. So we went from essentially a no insulation in the entire roof of this entire house to an R60 to an R66 insulation, dramatically changing the ability of this house to stay warm in the wintertime and cold in the summertime. Any good part of an insulating job has to address the walls. It is actually the biggest surface area in the entire house, more than the roof and more than the floor. And what we're doing on this project is we're using a rock wool insulation or a stone that has been melted and made into a fiberglass like material. And we're sticking that in the walls. Now, unfortunately, these walls in this house were only three and a half inches thick. They used a two by four. And so we can only stick three and a half inches of insulation in this. So this is only an R12 insulation for this wall. And we see that once we put this in here, really an R12 is not gonna perform very well. So we're gonna go outside and we're gonna put additional insulation on, which I'll show you in a second. On the inside of the house, we place the insulation between the studs. The studs are the structure of the building. So they support the walls and the roof. Now that that function is achieved, we can actually place the insulation on the outside of the wall without having to avoid the studs. Now this does two things. First of all, it allows us to place a lot of insulation on the outside of the house, 
but it also allows us to stop the conductive heat transfer through the studs. On this project, we're taking two and a half inches of polyisocyanurate insulation. So this has an R6 per inch, two and a half inches is an R15. And we place that like this against the house and then we screw through that into the framing to hold it in place. Then our siding and drainage plane goes on top of this. It then flushes out with the windows, giving us an additional R30 or R15 of insulation for a full wall cavity that's an R27. So we went from a zero insulation R, R wall cavity to an R27 wall cavity, which is one and a half times the code requirement for insulation. This will also give us an additional safety factor because now we're protecting our waterproof membrane against our house, making our house much more durable and less prone to water infiltration and the damage that it causes. Next, we're gonna look at the floor insulation. Our insulation journey stops with the crawl space. Now, this house, when it was originally built, didn't have any insulation. And so it was really, really cold in the wintertime and not very comfortable in the summertime. So we're gonna change that by really planning how we're gonna insulate this space. Now, because this is a, a remodel, we actually have to worry about air sealing this floor. And throughout this project, we've been trying to think about ways to effectively insulate and air seal this crawl space. And we couldn't really think of any way other than a closed cell foam. So we're gonna use one inch of closed cell foam and spray it on the underside of the floor plywood in between the floor joists. Then we're gonna fill the rest of that floor joist cavity, so that's six and a half inches, with a stonewall insulation. That stonewall insulation has an R value of three per inch. So that gives us an R19.5 insulation for just the stonewall. And then the one inch of closed cell foam is an additional R value of seven. So that's gonna give us an R26.5 floor insulation. The combination of the floor insulation, the wall insulation, and the roof insulation will dramatically increase the comfort of this house. Because we're right next to a busy street, it will also dramatically reduce the amount of noise that comes in and out of this house. And lastly, all that insulation does an exceptional job of protecting the air sealing of this house so that now we're more energy efficient with insulation and we're more airtight, making this house a dramatically different house. If you're interested in learning more about building science or following our projects, hit subscribe as we show you how we build a better way.